insurance. Consider Geico. 75 years, they know what they're doing. Want to save it simple? Go to geico.com. Doug Gottlieb is joining me here on a uh, Monday. And uh, so, you know, I think it's, it's – um, I'm watching this Jimmy G thing. So I was gone last Thursday, Friday, and Jimmy Garoppolo, you were subbing in, and Jimmy Garoppolo sound, signed this big contract. And, and I hear this stuff all the time. Everybody's like, whoa, totally risky. And I'm like, no, there's no risk because he has Kyle Shanahan. And it's almost like, you know, again, if you're arguing about, let's say you have a pool, you build a pool in Seattle, there is a chance you won't use it a ton. If you b- build a pool in Phoenix, okay, so Phoenix makes the pool. It could be the same pool builder, same size of pool, same shape. Phoenix makes the pool. You'll use it. Okay, we have Kyle Shanahan. He made Matt Schaub a pro bowler. RG3 was great for an hour. Like, to me, Jimmy Garoppolo, bagel, zero chance to fail. I don't think it's a risk. I think it's a risk having C.J. Beathard starting a season. You also, you, you skip curious omission, Matt Ryan, who I know you're not in love with. Matt Ryan was the MVP of the league, right? Right. The, the, the beauty to it is what I think we all wish we would, would have done or wish you could do, which is whether it's test drive the car or live with, the, live with her before she becomes your wife, right? You, right. you want to know before you know. And that's what they did. And this is, you've heard of wins above replacement? Yes. This is replacement wins above wins, right? It's a completely different baseball stat that we came up with last week. This was a team that was dormant. They were next to the Cleveland Browns. They were the worst team in the National Football League. And then he comes in, and they're arguably the second or third best team, maybe even the best team at the end of the season in the NFC. Yes. And it wasn't like they didn't beat bad teams. They beat the Jaguars, who lost to the Patriots in a close game. They beat the Titans, who lost to the Patriots. They beat playoff teams uh, on their way to 5-0. and Look at the change in their offense. But more than anything, everybody felt better. Everybody felt like there was hope. And if you look at the contract, it's front-loaded. They can get out of it in a couple years if they have to. But – it's perfect. You have a you have a team who you have a GM who's they loaded up in the draft last year. They're loaded up on the draft this year. You have an offensive minded head coach who, as you pointed out, Shab RG three. Everybody Matt, succeeds Matt, with everybody Every succeeds. Every single person and, succeeds. And they've test driven. They've done more than test driven the car. They've taken the car home for the weekend, driven around and going, yep, that will work. You know what? It goes back to this. It, it, one of the things I've always loved the NFL draft. I love and I love the NBA draft, but it's not as big a spectacle. One of the things I love to do, it's one of my favorite parts of this job, is projecting who's going to be great. So about two years ago, I'm like, Sam Darnold's going to be the number one pick. Trust me, he is. You told me a couple years ago, Ben Simmons is going to be the number one pick. Trust me, he is. That's fun in our job. Like, anybody can say LeBron's great. What's fun is finding a gem and going, oh, he's going to be great. And even if he fails, that's part of sports. Here's the truth about finding the next great blank. You can tell really quickly. I've never, I'm not a music expert. I'll never be a music executive. I have nobody in my family with music background. When I used to watch American Idol in five seconds, I never, ever, ever. Yeah, you can tell. It's like hack, lounge singer, decent but won't win, finalist. You can tell in nine seconds. And like when you watch Jimmy Garoppolo, what don't you get? A mobile, big, strong, 7-0 and oh in all of his starts. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you two references. One, I mean, here's the strongest recommendation you could ever get from Bill Belichick. He was willing to get rid of Tom Brady. Okay? <laughs> he was willing to get rid of Tom Brady. This isn't, this isn't he's a backup. This isn't Brian Hoyer. This isn't Matt Castle. This isn't a backup. He was willing to get rid of Tom Brady. You're like, okay, I'm paying attention now. Right. Um, Darius Rucker's a, a, a friend of mine. Yeah. And Hootie and the Blowfish? Well, yeah, but now he's Darius Rucker, superstar what? country singer. <laughs> no, the other Darius Rucker. Yeah, there's only one. Yeah, Whatever yeah, happened but, to but, the Blowfish guy? <laughs> they, they still play together once a year at Monday after the Masters. So who do you know Hootie? Yeah, is, he's Darius... <laughs> Did he ditch the Blowfish? Yes, a long time ago. He actually did an R&B album, which was good. Now he's a country He's a country music superstar. So his Where's first... the Blowfish? They're so still in South Carolina. Been right. been it's been a long, long time, Colin. All right. Um, his friends I mean, you're are not longer... a music executive. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Golden Girls is no longer on the air, Colin. No longer here. Betty White's doing a great job. She's doing great Solo though. act, Betty White. Uh, um, so I asked Darius, there's a song he has, it won't be like this for long. If, you ever, if you're a parent and you've heard it, one, it's the perfect song. Second, you're not a dry eye. And I, I was like, how did you know that that song was a hit? He said, we went around Nashville, we played it for all the different record companies, and there wasn't a dry eye in the room. And they're like, 
we got ourselves a hit. Right. Right? It just you just know. And in a quarterback starved league, when you have teams in the playoffs that need a quarterback, and you have one who's healthy, who studied under Tom Brady, and the greatest coach in modern football history and the most accomplished quarterback in modern football. The greatest coach was willing to go like, yeah, Tom Brady, I love you, but I'd rather have this guy. It, that's the not a dry eye in the room. Um, good story. I almost ruined it for you, but I really like that okay. story. Uh, I got it's kind funny. of stuck on that blowfish thing. <laughs> All right. So uh, here's your Put blowfish were great, though. <laughs> hey, come with me to Monday after the Masters. We're going to be there doing the radio show. Get the TV show to go there. They play... On uh, after the uh, Sunday night after the Masters, okay. Monday they have a tournament and they play on Monday night at uh, in Myrtle Beach. And then you and I can do the show together, and we'll be back in better than ever. Uh, yes. Okay. So <laughs> let me seg- <laughs> let me segue to this. Okay. So <laughs> I, I'm not necessarily a fun guy. Yes. Uh, when when I uh, my wife will say that once in a while. I don't. I'm not into. The, I'm, I'm not a. I'm not a gift receiver. Look, I like giving. I've been gift. to Vegas with you. We went out exactly one uh, twice to dinner. Neither were on the strip. Okay, it was your buddy had the pasta shop. Yeah, the pasta I'm shop? not fun. You're not fun. I'm not fun. You're but- like, hey, do you want to go to Seinfeld? Yes, we get tickets to Seinfeld, and me and Angie, me and my wife, we go to Seinfeld. We're like, you come? We're like, no, no, I'm gonna stay. And I'm gonna work out and watch them. Like, what? Okay, I'm okay. So the point is, I'm boring. And because I'm, uh, because of that, mm-hmm. I like people who are serious. I tend to be overly serious, right? Like I need to lighten up some. That's why my wife's good for me. She's more social. So when I hear like Lane Johnson, guys like this drive me crazy. Hey, New England are a bunch of robots. We're having a good time over here. And I'm always like, oh, Christ. Could, I'm not into, I'm not into, I'm like, oh, shut up. You're like the Eagles. You've been good for an hour. And now your election, you're literally the radio host who has a weekend shift. Your first day on the air, you kind of you click and you're like, yeah, don't be a robot like those other successful people. How about Philadelphia stop talking? Okay, I'm done. What do you make of fun guy? You played college sports. Was Eddie Sutton fun? No. You know what was really fun? When we had more points than they had. (laughs) That was really, really fun. That's the most fun. And that's why they're enjoying themselves. But had Atlanta run any kind of fourth down play and completed a pass, it wouldn't have been that fun. And look, they did... We, we did this last week. Like, you know, they're celebrating. We're the ultimate underdog. You were the underdog because everybody watched Nick Foles play for the Rams right. and thought that Nick Foles couldn't complete a forward pass. Okay. We watched Nick Foles week 16, week 17 of the season. They look like a disaster offensively, and we couldn't buy into the idea that Tom Brady could lose the Super Bowl. Right. And look, the Patriots still had to miss a field goal, miss an extra point. And, and you completed two touchdowns that – any other week of the season would not have been considered touchdowns. Yes. Out River on would have gone, nah. Okay, but the NFL chose to rewrite the interpretation of the rule on the fly in the Super Bowl. And then and only then, after you got to you only got to Tom Brady one time. The best defensive front in football were you got to def- now you just happened to get to him at the perfect time. Perfect time in his release, perfect time in the game, and you got one only that won you a Super Bowl. Right. So congrats. Enjoy the victory ride. Okay, we're not going to hold it against Lane Johnson, the, the two steroids. He's suspension. on your show today, by the way. Is he? I yeah. like Lane Johnson. I like that he's having fun. I don't but like him right now. But please don't say there's something do. wrong with the, with the New England Patriots when they've had fun eight times getting to eight, eight Super Bowls. Five Super Bowl championships. Listen, man, every day I come in and grind on this show, I enjoy the experience. I wouldn't label it as fun. Like, if you're going to work, this is one of my knocks on my, my barista thing. And I, and I listen, I just got to tell you, I go to the same coffee shop. I'm not trying to get anybody fired. But when I go to my coffee shop in the morning and they ask every time, they're like, uh, what would you like? And I tell them, and they're like, okay, we'll make some coffee for you. And I'm like, hey, don't go to a donut shop. And they're like, you want a donut? I'll go back and make it for you. It's like, stop having so much fun at work and chatting amongst yourself. When I walk into a coffee shop, coffee should be made. Okay, so the more fun they're having at that place, the less fun I'm having as a consumer. No one's having more fun than Chris, by the way. Colin knows this. I find Colin so highly entertaining that I just listen to him. Because what he's saying makes total sense. Okay, have you ever gone to a coffee shop? I used to work at Starbucks. I used to own a coffee shop. And never once in my life would I have someone walk and be like, I'll have a, a grande, you know, blonde blend and not have it ready. Like, you, that's what you do. You make coffee, right? Or having been a barista in one of my, like, 97 
in jobs. You would know if I I would know if Colin walked in every day and got the same thing. I'd okay. be like, hey, Colin, grande. My trip. people, it's Mardi Gras back there. And it's just like, and I'm like, <laughs> hey, well, customer. I'm, I don't know. The, way, the, it's my off season and I'm looking for a gig. So I'm happy to go back to that the, the, said coffee shop. I only got 30 seconds. The Kill baller it. move is, though, that when you walk, I can't believe you walk in the door. I walk in the door. I'm a coffee bean and tea leaf guy. I walk in the door, and my, they already know who I am, know what I like. I have a specific type of drink that I like, and it's waiting for me. Yeah. That's the ball. I can't believe you don't have that. No, I walk into mine, and they're playing, uh, they're playing Pokemon. I'm like, hey, Gunga Din, deliver the caffeine to the king here, okay? Doug Gottlieb, Fox Sports Radio. Thanks, buddy.